Good morning, Experience Church family, and thank you for joining us for Experience Church Online. This past week, our Financial Peace course completed its first session. During the class, over $300,000 in debt was paid off. 15 people are on their way to financial freedom. Don't miss our next class, which starts in the fall. On Pray the Bay's Instagram last Thursday, we featured someone from our EXP family, Stel Bernardo, who has started a prayer gathering at Facebook where she works. Thank you, Stel, for planting prayer in your workplace. We also had a great beach day and cleanup at Ocean Beach in San Francisco. It was great to be together as we served our community. Let's get ready to worship. Good morning, Church Online. If we haven't met yet, my name is Bruno. And my name is Ty. I want to give a big shout out to all the fathers watching today and all my dudes. Happy Father's Day. Yes, happy Father's Day. Here at Experience Church, we believe that when people meet Jesus and live in community, they become who they are born to be. That's right. And also, you can belong before you believe. Yes, that's right. One thing that I love about our family is that when we come to church and we come together to EXP on a Sunday service, we're not just a another church. We are a family, and we do pray for one another. And we do be, and here at EXP, we do believe that when we pray, something does happen. Yes, that's right. And if you are watching from church online or YouTube or Facebook, thank you so much for spending your Sunday morning with us today. And if this is your first time, or maybe you want to learn more about EXP, please go over to exp.church/connect. We would love to just get to know you. You can fill out a connection card That's right. and we're going to reach out to you. And now we're going to move into our tithes and offerings. We want to thank you for believing in our church and to give faithfully every time. Yes, and here on screen, you can see the different ways that you can give today. Thank you so much for helping us, uh, making thank you for helping Experience Church make a home for people to build a life that matters and become who they're born to be. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much that you are a generous God. Thank you that you love to give good gifts. Right now, as we present to you our tithes and offerings, we ask that you would bless it in Jesus' name. Father, we are excited to see what you have for us during this worship experience today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's pray in Spanish. <laughs> Padre, Gracias por todo que ha hecho en la iglesia. Gracias por todas las personas que hoy viene y le puede ayudar en la comunidad de EXP Church. Gracias por todo que ha provido. Gracias porque hasta acá el Señor nos honró y nos ayudó con todo. Yes. Bendiciones a toda la iglesia, Padre. En nombre de Jesús oramos. Amén y amén. Amén. Let's move into a time of worship. Good morning, church. As we worship this morning, we wanted to begin with a scripture from John chapter 1. Uh, in this chapter, John actually talks about Jesus, and he describes him as the Word of God, and he calls him the light of the world. This is John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God, and God created everything through him, and nothing was created except through him. The Word gave life to everything that was created, and His life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. Come on, let's lift our voices together. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the dark. You give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in the lungs, so we
your worship to him, worshiping him for who he is, what he's done, what he's doing right now. There is a sound I love to hear. It's the sound of the Savior's robe as he walks into the room where people pray. When we hear praises, he hears faith. Want anybody have faith today? Faith for God to move in your life, in whatever situation you're in. Come on, let's sing together. There is a sound. There is a sound I love to hear. It's the sound of the Savior's robe as He walks into the room where people pray. When we hear worship, He hears faith. Worship rise to Him. Awake our souls, Lord, to You. Awake my soul and sing, sing His praise aloud. Sing His praise aloud.
Come on, let us praise ring out across the earth. Awake my soul and sing, sing his praise aloud, sing his praise Happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. I've got my three kids with me this morning, Max, Jack Jones, and Maddie, and they've got something special for you. Yeah, so today I want to share with you guys a dad joke about golf. So if you like golf, you're going to like this one. All right, making sure you bring two pairs of pants when you go golfing. Now you guys are probably asking why, like yeah. just why. Why? Just in case you get a hole in one. <laughs> I also have a dad joke for you. What's a bunny's favorite type of music? What is it? What? Hip hop! All right, and then the last dad joke. Police, I need help. There's 91 people following me. Don't worry, I'm gonna protect you. Where are you? Instagram. So, that doesn't even make sense. Like, I don't get it. Da dad jokes aren't supposed to make sense. They're meaningless, they're not funny, and they make no sense. It all makes sense now. <laughs> yep. Thank you guys so much for getting us started this morning. We are going to be honoring all of our dads, our fathers today at the end of church with a special prayer. And I just want to say thank you to all the dads, the fathers in our church that are serving and leading their families so well. We have some incredible fathers in our church. We're going to continue on in our teaching today in Romans 8 called Spiritual Life. We're going verse by verse through Romans 8. And we've covered a lot in the, the past few weeks. We've talked about identity. We've talked about for freedom and forgiveness. We've tried to make sense of our suffering, and we've learned how God uses suffering to actually benefit us. We've talked about our thinking and, and how God wants to help us think healthy thoughts and positive thoughts that actually help our life. And then we also talked about last week, everybody's favorite, heaven. Today, we're actually going to be talking about weakness and prayer. We're going to learn today that God prays for us. I know that sounds crazy to even think about. Like, what does he pray? What does he pray for me? How often does he pray? We're going to find out about that today. If you've got your Bibles or you're watching on the screen, you can turn with me to Romans chapter 8, verses 26 and 27. Let's get started. Likewise, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray. I don't know about you, but that's me a lot. <laughs> I don't know what to pray. I don't know specifically what to pray. But he prays for us as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches hearts know what is the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. God prays for us. Let's start this morning 
with prayer. If you would, bow your head and close your eyes. Father, we thank you so much that you are the ultimate Father, that nobody loves us like you. We love being your kids. Speak to us today and help us believe in your love. In Jesus' name, amen. One of my spiritual heroes, his name is Pete Gregg, and he started a 24-7 prayer movement in London that is now all over the world. And he tells this story about his son, Danny, when he was a toddler, came to him with with a, a paper full of scribbles and shapes, and he hands it to his dad and says, Daddy, look at what I've made. And Pete says, oh, wow, this is brilliant, son. I'm so proud of you. And, and then his two-year-old son says, read it, Daddy. It's like, how do you read shapes and scribbles? And so he pauses for a second, and he begins to think about his son and the type of person that he is and the weird little things that go on in his mind and the shapes that he would create and the kind of day that he was having. And then he began to interpret the the scribbles and he actually reads the paper to his son and his son's nodding the whole time. Good, Good job, daddy. Well done. You're right. That's exactly what I meant. And I believe that this is a a perfect illustration for our prayers and how the Holy Spirit interprets them. Oftentimes in life, we're not going to have the words. We're not even going to know where to start in prayer. But the beautiful thing is that God interprets our sighs, our groans, our sometimes empty breaths. And he turns those prayers, upon interpreting them, knowing our heart, he turns those into prayers. And not only are those prayers that are just kind of out there, those are prayers that capture our Father's heart, and then he actually answers those prayers that we're praying oftentimes without even knowing it through just the sounds of life that don't become words. He has a recipe where he turns them into words, interprets them, receives them, and eventually answers them. How incredible is that? I don't know about you, but that is like so encouraging. It gives me so much hope. I think many of us are praying way more than what we even realize because when we can't find words, the Holy Spirit finds the words for us. <clears throat> if you're taking notes, you can write this down today or in our notes tab on Church Online, you'll find the highlights here. God gets our prayers even when we don't. (laughs) Even when we don't know what to pray or, or how to pray or what to say, He gets us. He knows our hearts, the weird little things that come into our mind, the type of day that we're having, our personality and who we are. He gets us and our prayers even when we don't. My uh, little nephew, his name is Benny. And uh, when he was really little, he would, he would cry out with one of his few words and he would say, bop, bop, bop. And his parents, my little brother, they, they didn't know what he was saying. And they would try to give him a toy or a pacifier, or a blanket or, or something. And he was, he was just so passionate and direct. And he, he knew exactly what he was communicating, even though his parents didn't. And then eventually they figured out bop meant food. I guess it's the shortened form of food. It's only three letters instead of four. And he was saying, feed me. I need it now. I, I want food now. And he would cry out, bop, bop, bop. I think it's in, in, in the same way where, where we have a cry that comes within us for maybe change or healing or breakthrough, and we can't fully capture it with words, but it, it's a feeling. It's, it's something deep within, and the Holy Spirit gets us even when we don't get us in prayer, even when we can't form words. The Holy Spirit interprets, he receives, and he answers those as prayer. Mike Bickle, pastor and founder of IHOP, International House of Prayer in Kansas City, says this, our weak prayer times may not move us, but they move the heart of God. Wow, that's so encouraging to hear. He continues on, some people assume that they, that because they do not feel anything when they pray, that's me, I would say most of the time I don't feel anything when I pray. He says, that God must not be feeling anything. So the thought is, is I, I'm not feeling anything when I pray, God must not be feeling anything. 
He continues on. They conclude that their weak prayers are ineffectual and may even despise them. The truth is that we offer our prayers in human weakness. All of us do. But they ascend to God in power because of the sufficiency of Jesus and because they are in agreement with God's heart. Others believe they're growing in prayer if they feel good during their prayer times. Now, I love that when I feel good in my prayer times, but that's, that's actually kind of rare. Then he says this, they wrongly conclude that their prayers are meaningless when they feel dry and distracted. Dry, distracted prayers that feel empty and meaningless are powerful. The Holy Spirit interprets them, receives them, and answers them. That is good news. And I believe this lie. I believe this lie before that uh, my, my feeling of weakness or lack of feeling or even a numbness when I'm praying, that it, it makes my prayers ineffective. It makes my prayers feel weak. I've even had times where I've believed this lie and it's actually kept me from praying. I didn't want to pray because I didn't feel anything. I felt like they weren't even worth praying. Why bother? It's not even a big deal. But we know that's not true, that all of our prayers are effective. All of our prayers count. God is listening to every one of our prayers, with words and without words. And you may be one of those people that doesn't like to pray out loud, and that's good news for you. But the Bible also says that we are to give words to our prayer. We don't only pray with sounds and, and feelings from within. We use words, and that's what we see mostly in the Bible, is we see people finding words for their prayers. But even when we can't find the words, the Holy Spirit finds them for us. See, there's a big difference between feeling weak and being weak. See, being weak is actually not praying. I know that could maybe sting a little bit, but let me unpack this. See, not praying is choosing to stay weak. It's one thing to feel weak. It's another thing to be weak. We get weak and we are weak when we don't pray. See, as we pray, we actually receive strength. And prayerlessness is actually refusing to receive strength. We receive strength when we pray. And so we're not to avoid our weaknesses or try to cover our weaknesses. We live in a, a world and a modern society where we kind of shame weakness. We're actually to bring our weakness, confront our weakness, face our weakness, embrace our weakness, but we do it in prayer. We bring that weakness to God when we feel weak or maybe we've even grown weak or weary. We come to God with it. And in that place of prayer, he actually meets us and that weakness is actually transformed to strength. And so we've got to embrace our weakness through prayer. And we're in a culture that doesn't really do that. When was the last time you were interviewed or you were a part of an interview and you heard someone talk all about their weaknesses? We, we, we don't hear that. We see in the scripture, Paul does. He actually, in this upside down kingdom, is countercultural, and he actually boasts of his weaknesses because he knows this. Jesus told him this in 2 Corinthians 12. He said that Jesus came to him and said, my power is made perfect in weakness. Imagine if we saw weakness as an open door to God's perfect strength and power. I think all of us would invite him into that weakness and so much more prayer would be done. See, I want to speak real quick to the fathers. I know we're called to be macho men and strong and courageous all the time, and we're to lead our family spiritually, and, and we're to have a solution to every problem and be able to fix everything, and, but we don't, and we can't. As a dad, I feel overwhelmed often, sometimes exhausted outmatched, not up to speed. I feel many times like I don't have what it takes. And the trouble with being a dad is we don't really know how we're doing for decades. I won't really know how I'm doing as a dad by how even my kids do, but it's really how my kids parent and how their kids do is how effective I am as a father. And so as fathers, I think oftentimes we feel weak. And instead of running from that or hiding that or keeping that from God, we're to embrace that weakness and we're to move towards him for help through prayer. His power is made perfect. And this is the beauty of weakness, is weakness shows us 
that we need help. We need strength. We cannot do it on our own. And this is what prayer does. Prayer acknowledges our need for help. This is why every Friday morning with Pray the Bay, our prayer movement that started as prayer in our church, that has now moved outwards to across the bay, we gather on Zoom on Friday mornings, men at 8 a.m. and women at 8.30, and we jump into breakout rooms and we pray for each other. And there are fathers in our church carrying heavy stuff with parenting and marriage and career and finances and all kinds of emotional things. And we, we gather together and we pray for each other because we don't want to be weak And if we are weak, we don't want to stay weak. We want to receive strength. There is so much strength available to all of us. And we can actually receive it through prayer. And that's what prayer does. Prayer acknowledges that I need help. I don't have it all figured out. I need some answers. I need some direction. I don't know where to go or what to do. Those are the feelings of weakness that are then turned to strength in prayer. Because in prayer, guess what? We get solutions. In prayer, God answers us. We begin to know what to do and where to go and how to, how to go about doing things and leading. Timothy Keller, speaking of being weak and not praying, says this. It's actually a prayer. Lord, prayerlessness is a sin against you. It comes from a self-sufficiency that is wrong and that dishonors you. I can, I can make it on my own. I can do it on my own. I can figure it out. Prayerlessness is a sin against those around me. I should be engaging my heart and your power in their needs, but I don't. I I don't even think about others or pray for others. Then he says this, I love this prayer. Lord, I pray with all my heart that you would give me a heart for prayer. That's a great prayer to pray. See, vulnerable is not being weak. All of us need help. And the primary way that we access God's help is through prayer. It's through prayer. Yeah, the Bible is important, and and community is important, and church is important, and serving is important, and giving. All those things are important, but the primary way, the number one way that we receive God's help is through prayer. That's why Nikki Gumbel, pastor and author, HTV in London, says that the, the most important activity on planet Earth is prayer, and if I'm really honest, I don't like asking for help. I actually hate asking for help. That's like my last option. I want to figure it out on my own. I'll, I'll Google it. I'll, I'll, I'll ask for a friend, right? I don't ever want to be in a position where I need help. Directions? Nah, I'll weigh it. I'll Apple Maps it. I'll figure it out. But that only lasts so long. In, in not too much time at all, I come to a place where like, hey, I, I, I can't get this outside of myself. I, I need help. And so one of the things that I've learned to do during the pandemic is invite and even ask others to pray for me. And this has been kind of hard for me because of pride in my heart. I don't don't want others to pray for me because I need to pray for them. I'm a pastor and they've got issues and I'm here to support them. And I've made it a habit to where I am continually inviting and asking people how I can pray for them. But one of the things I haven't done that I've learned recently is inviting and asking others to pray for me. And I made excuses, they're gonna be intimidated, nobody wants to pray for the pastor. And, and then as I just began to do it, I learned that, wow, when people pray for me and I hear their prayers and I feel their prayers, it does so much for me and it also does so much for them. And so I would encourage you in this lens of prayer, invite and ask other people to pray for you. That's a way of you asking for help. Some of the most encouraging moments for me during the pandemic have been me hearing and receiving prayer from others after I've asked them to pray for me. Another thing that I've learned is how God speaks to me through prayer. If I'm on a run or maybe walking the dog or maybe I'm just about doing daily work and someone pops into my mind, normally that's the Holy Spirit saying pray for that person. I take a moment and pray for that person. And then sometimes I'll send him a text and let him know I'm praying for them. I've even had times where I've recorded a voice text where I tell them I'm praying for them and then I actually pray for them all in about 45 seconds to a minute. I would invite and encourage and even challenge you to do this, this fascinating adventure in living with and following the Holy Spirit's promptings and lead. It's so fun hearing the encouragement that comes from so many people that have texted me after they've popped into my mind and I prayed for them and I contacted them. They've said the tears that they've had, that they received that text at just the right moment when they were praying and asking God for an answer. 
And then my prayer came, and it was almost like God saying to them, I've heard you. I'd invite you, I'd encourage you, and I'd challenge you. As the Holy Spirit puts someone on your mind and heart, pray for them, and then reach out to them, and let them know that you're praying for them. All right, one of the things that uh, <clears throat> I'm really enjoying right now as a dad, this is probably the best thing about being a dad right now, is this uh, Sabbath dinner on Friday nights that we have as a family, and we receive communion together, and communion has now all of a sudden turned into a prayer meeting in the last few months. And we take uh, the bread that symbolizes the healing that we can receive in Jesus. And we just started praying for all the people uh, that are friends, family, coworkers, neighbors that we knew that were sick. We just started praying for sick people that we know. And we've got a little notebook and uh, a man and I and our kids, we write down all the names of the people and, and the sickness that they're dealing with. And we just started praying. And this little time of communion on Friday nights as a family has now turned into this incredibly moving, inspiring prayer gathering with our children praying for sick people. And we've seen some of them healed already. And then we don't stop there. We, we actually then take the wine, which symbolizes uh, Jesus's blood, forgiveness, and freedom. And we confess, all of us, at one thing that we're kind of struggling with or, or, or we feel like we're getting defeated in and we need forgiveness and freedom. That's created this beautiful culture of honesty and transparency and vulnerability as a family. And then we don't stop there. We actually look at how sin is ravaging our community. And we pray against violence and injustice and poverty. And we pray for the welfare of our city. What started out as just simple receiving communion as a family has now turned into this brilliant prayer gathering. It's, it's the moment every week that I look forward to more than anything else is receiving communion and praying together with our children. I love hearing what God is doing from so many of you that have said you've started and planted prayer in your homes during the pandemic as well. Let's now move to what I would call the center cinnamon roll, the really good news. This is what I believe is gonna be the most encouraging thing from our teaching this morning. When I was a kid with our siblings, we'd always fight over the center cinnamon roll because it had the most icing, it was the gooeyest, it was the best. I believe that this truth right here has the power to really set you free and encourage you. And it's this, we see it in verse 27, that God prays for us. He prays for you and he prays for me. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. He's always praying for us. The scripture says that Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father and he lives to make intercession for you, to pray for you, think about that, that's amazing. So then the next question is, wow, God's praying for me. That's gonna take a while for my mind to wrap around, but what is he actually praying? Well, the Bible tells us. The Bible says that he is praying his perfect will for us, God's will, his will, he's praying for us. And his will for us is always good for us. We're gonna talk about this a little bit next week. His will may not always look good or feel good. It may not even always make sense, but what we'll learn from his perspective, from his vantage point and viewpoint, his will for us is always good. We're gonna be talking about that in depth next week. One of the prayers that we see that Jesus had for Peter was this. He says, Satan has demanded to have you that he may sift you like wheat. So Satan wants to have Peter killed, executed, murdered. But here's Jesus' prayer. I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. Now, I would have thought Jesus would have prayed for protection or a way of escape. That's not what he prayed. He prayed that Peter's faith would not fail. Wow. We get a glimpse of what God prays for us. Now, I want you to think about this today. If prayer is the most important activity on earth and God himself prays, that shows you how important it is to God, that God himself prays. How much more should we pray? See, God continually prays his will for us because we don't. <laughs> I think we know very little of the fullness of his will for our lives. We don't know his will for us like he does for us. And it's so easy to pray our will and not his. And what I've learned is the primary reason why God doesn't answer my prayers when I want him to is because my prayers are way too small. I pray my will, which is actually much smaller than his will, and so he waits me out. 
He, he wants me to keep praying. And as I pray, what happens is my prayers grow and they grow eventually to come to the place where it matches up with his will because his will for me and my life is always way bigger than what I think or what I see. And so he actually rescues me from answering my small prayers so that they grow to become big prayers because that's actually his will. Some of you have been wondering, maybe that's the answer to some of the answers you have not yet received in prayer. God wants to grow those prayers to match up with his will. And I think when we talk about God's will, it can be mysterious. We know God's general will from the scripture, the Bible teaches us that, but his specific will. For students out there that are, uh, you're in school and what should my major be and what should my career be? And you're trying to figure out specifically. And then maybe you, you move into your career, but it's what job do I take? And what company do I work for? And do I make the long commute or do I work for someone close by? It could even be uh, a house housing situation. You're single, do I get roommates? Can I afford that? Do I live in this complex or that complex? Do I buy this house in that neighborhood with the school districts or do I go over here where maybe I feel like God's calling me? The specific will of God requires prayer in order for us to receive it and get it and live it. And so even those singles out there, you're wondering, I, I wanna be married someday. I wanna have a relationship. I wanna have a family. Do I use the dating apps or do I just meet someone random? How do I do that? Specifically God's will. That comes to us through prayer. And the beauty is that the Holy Spirit and Jesus himself are already praying that will for you constantly every single day. I'll never forget a pastor friend of mine who had a story of someone in his church, businessman that came to him and was frustrated with his job and had some issues. And, and so he prayed for him to receive a new job. And it was about a week later, the, the businessman stomps into his office angry and upset and says, Pastor, we prayed for a new job, and then a week later, I got fired. I got let go. They downsized the company. And the pastor said to him, he said, well, well how are you going to get a better job if you don't get rid of the job you've got? How are you going to get a, a new job, the better job you want, without getting rid of the one you got? And so they, they prayed again. And sure enough, it was literally a week later, the competitor that this man was actually working against reached out to him. They found out that he had lost his job reach out to him, they offer him a job with a much higher salary, better benefit package, it ended up being a much better working environment. See, we don't always know God's will specifically, but we know that his will for us is always good for us. So here's a really great prayer to pray, and I, I want all of us to pray this together. It's really short, it's simple, but it's powerful. Holy Spirit, help me know, pray, and do your will. Now think about that. I can't do his will if I don't know his will, and I'll never know his will if I don't pray for his will. I actually need to know it. I actually need to pray for it so that I can actually do it. I can live it. The life you long for is in knowing, praying for, and ultimately doing, living God's will for your life. What a great prayer. All right, I wanna to move towards our closing today by honoring our dads. But the first people I wanna to speak to are those people that have lost a dad. Maybe you've even lost your dad to COVID during the pandemic. We are so sorry for your loss. That's heavy and that's hard. Maybe you lost your dad to sickness decades ago, but you still feel the sting of that loss. Maybe you lost your dad to divorce where after the split, you, you rarely see him or maybe there's a strain on the relationship. Maybe you never really had a dad around due to incarceration or maybe an early death or maybe you, you had a dad, but he wasn't really there. He was present but emotionally absent. That pain and that loss is, is heavy and dark and hard. And we offer our grief and condolences with you. The Bible says in Psalm 68, here's good news to you, that he, our heavenly father, is the father to the fatherless. The father to the fatherless. And his message, the heavenly father's message to every one of us, his kids, is simple. You are loved. That's right. Receive the heavenly father's love today. Fatherlessness is a real thing. 
In America, we are the most fatherless nation in the world. An estimated 24.7 million children, 33%, one of three kids in America live absent from their biological father today. Because of premarital births and uh, continuing high divorce rate, the proportion of kids living in single family homes has doubled in the last 50 years. And if you are a single parent, we champion you. We do not shame you. We love you. We believe in you. We pray for double portions of grace to do what you're doing. You're incredible. <laughs> Thank you so much for doing what you're doing. We honor you and bless you. There is a, in, 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 there was a study done, and in America, 72% of people in our population as Americans said that father, fatherlessness is the most significant family and social problem facing America. A leading psychologist said if it were classified as a disease, fatherlessness would be an epidemic worthy of attention as a national emergency. We need godly fathers in our country. And so I want us to pray right now for our fathers. If you're watching and you're a father, please stand on your feet wherever you are. If you've got people around you, let's extend our hands to our fathers this morning. And I want us to pray this prayer that we've written specifically for our dads. I want us to pray it together out loud. We're gonna pray this over our fathers today. Let's pray it together. Loving Father, we thank you for the gift of family and especially the gift of our fathers. You made the family a community of love where we can grow up to become who we are born to be. Bless our fathers as they follow your son, Jesus. Let their faith, hope, and love shine in our families and show us the way to you. Strengthen our fathers as they serve our families and communities. May their example reflect your protective care for all of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for all the fathers. We honor you. I want to give a little action before our invitation this morning. For all of us watching today, what can you do with what you've learned today? Number one, pray for dads. Pray for your dad or maybe a brother or a son or a cousin or an uncle that is a dad or even single moms that are carrying double duty. Pray for dads and then pray for our country that God would raise up fathers. I'm praying for revival of fatherhood in our country across every region, state, city, town, school district, zip code, that there would be a revival of godly fathers in our nation. I encourage you to honor your dad today. If you haven't sent him a card or you're not in town, you can't take him out to lunch and bless him. I would encourage you to send a text today or a video or a voice text, something communicating honor and love to your dad and the dads in your life. I know I've got a great father, but I've got some incredible fathers in my life that aren't my biological father. I'll be reaching out to them today. Would encourage you to do the same. And then lastly, look to help and connect those without dads with dads. Maybe it's your children, dads, and, and your kids have friends that don't have dads. Maybe you can kind of put your arm around them and, and help fill that gap. Or maybe there's somebody in your neighborhood or school or, or maybe even your own family that you have a dad that they could connect with. Let's connect people that need dads with dads. All of us need dads. Everybody needs a dad. And then lastly, I wanna close with this. You may be watching today and you're new to faith or maybe you're exploring Christianity or maybe you're, you're figuring out Jesus. Here's what I want you to know. Our Heavenly Father loves you. He invites you into His home to sit at His table and to be in His family. And Jesus tells this story in Luke 15 about a young man who, who runs away from his father and he just makes a mess of his life. And in the midst of the mess, he realizes, hey, I can live much better just as a servant in my father's own house. And so he doesn't go back home because he even wants relationship with his father. He doesn't go back home for anything less than just, I can have a better quality life. I, I, I don't have to live like this. And he goes back expecting just to be a servant, but the Bible says that the father sees him a great way off and he runs towards him. The only time we read in the scripture that God runs, he runs towards 
this son that's coming home. The father doesn't even really care why you're coming home. He just wants you home. And maybe you've walked away from Jesus or church, or maybe this is the first time you're hearing this gospel message. I wanna give you an invitation, an opportunity right now to come home. Life begins to make sense when you come home. Life is so much easier in the family of God at home with our Father. If you would just put your hand on your heart and you wanna make this decision today to come home to your heavenly Father, let's pray this together. Say, Father, thank you for open arms. Thank you for running towards me, to love me, accept me, and help me. I surrender my life to you. I believe in your son, Jesus, and what he did for me on the cross. Please be the leader of my life. I turn from my past and I turn to you in Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, it's the best prayer that we can pray. The Bible says all of heaven celebrates one person that prays that prayer and comes home. Bless you today. Wow, what a great message by Pastor Mark. We always get filled every time he preaches it. We love you and you're an amazing pastor. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes, you are. And you know what? We have some great news to, for you guys right now. So pull out your calendars, mark your calendars so you don't miss all of the fun things that is happening at, at EXP. So next week, Sunday the 27th, we are having baptisms. That's right, both of our, our locations, we're gonna have baptisms. So if you wanna be baptized or if you know somebody that wants to be baptized, head over to our website again at exp.church slash connect and fill out a connection so we can know and reach out to you back, reach That's, back to you. <laughs> there you go. And guess what? Family camp is just Woo! around the corner. Come on. Labor Day weekend. You don't wanna miss it, I guarantee you that. Two years ago, it was epic, and this year, I'm very sure it's gonna be even better. So fill up, go, uh, fill up the application, go online to exp.church and find the link and register yourself. Don't miss this one out. You're gonna regret if you don't do it. <laughs> That's right, registration is open. And thank you once again for spending your Sunday morning with us. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye now. God bless. <laughs>